Today we'll be taking a look at the result of my need for some mechanics for an eventual adventure map, my love for Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and a lot of its arrow-based puzzles, and also a whole lot of testing. And the idea that I decided on was I wanted to simply shoot a bow and have it detected somewhere else, and I thought that a pressure pad might be useful because a shot arrow is an item that you can pick up. So as you can see it does not work, but we can still pick up the arrow. But of course, a arrow that is an actual item is a lot different from an arrow that is shot. They're two different things. One activates the pad and one doesn't. So I wanted to come up with a way that would actually activate the pad with a bow. And I, I thought at first that maybe there just wasn't some updating that was happening. So I looked at some ways that I might be able to test for updating the pad to make sure that an arrow actually does activate our pad and then immediately turns off when the arrow disappears. And so, what I came up with after a lot of testing was particles. And it sounds really weird, but if we were to shoot this arrow at this pad, it's very easy to demonstrate. For example, if we were to punch this bit of sand here, you can see that sand particles are being generated as little squares that are falling all over near the area that I punch. See, it's falling on the left side when I punch the left, the right side when I punch the right, top when I punch the top, etc. So if I were to punch this pad, particles are generated and magically the block updates and our pressure pad activates and as soon as we remove our arrow, the pressure pad deactivates. So it's a reliable detection system. And that would be a bit difficult to actually use in adventure modes because you can't actually get up and punch a pressure pad whenever you are uh, trying to use bows, otherwise you could just throw an item down or something like that. It wouldn't really make a lot of sense. So. I looked for some ways to make some particles without using, you know, punching general generic methods and such. So the first is water. If you place water near our pressure pad, you can actually cause a splash that will generate particles, intrude on our pressure pad's block space, and therefore update it and activate our pad with the arrow on it. So if we were to shoot the left side here where there is no water, we can see that it is not being activated. But if we were to shoot the right side, where we have our water, we can cause a splash and it activates our pad. So as you see, if we just keep firing, we get more splashes. However, that's a bit of an issue because then you have to have your player uh, knowledgeable in that fact and require them to shoot directly at our water in that corner. And so, for that we have fire instead. And fire sends out the particles just like our water does, but continuously and those particles will therefore always activate our pad even if we don't fire near the fire itself. So if we were to shoot the left side of our pad here, as soon as particles intrude upon its space it activates the pressure pad and we're all golden. And the same thing can be said for fire that is underground because it still generates smoke particles that are flying through our blocks and above our pad. So we can hide our fire underground fire and still get the same effect. So we can actually hide our pads complete or our fire completely from our pads so that the player doesn't actually see the particle generation system. However, the smoke that's being generated from our pressure pad has this very nice interactive feel to it. You see smoke coming off of this pad and it gives you the sense that this pressure pad is much more interactive and different from normal pressure pads and maybe that will help a player determine whether they can actually use their bow on a pressure pad or if they have to use other means. So I find that to be fairly important. And one thing that should be demonstrated is that you cannot use flaming arrows which is unfortunate, I really would like to, but they do not generate these smoke particles that we need. However, what that is generated from lava is the small particles that it sends out, such as the, um, what would they be called, I don't know, the little lava bits that fly out of the lava. Those are particles, and if they fly out, I'm sure if you were to re rewind the video you could see what I'm talking about, but if those particles fly out from our lava, they will activate the pressure pad, so you can make a very unique pressure pad where it's very difficult to tell when it'll happen and you just have to fire and then wait for the pressure pad to go off and you can activate some sort of secret with that. But in general, the idea is that you can't use flaming arrows by themselves because they don't generate those smoke 
those smoke particles that we need to activate our pad. And so some finished designs with those two ideas in mind, that is the hidden fire and the visible fire, is this for one. And the idea is the more fire you have around your pad, the more smoke particles will get. And if you bottle in those smoke, par those smoke particles and you have plenty of them, you will get a very consistent uh, activation. So if we were to shoot this pad, it immediately activates. No delays really because we have so much particles being generated. And then I just have a torch on the back side of that that is inverting the power to this redstone that is laid out in two spaces so that we get it constantly powering this block as opposed to just sitting there not powering anything and then that keeps our uh, sort of visual indicator that the pad has been activated inactive. Uh, there are a lot of better ways you could probably do it maybe, I'm not really sure, but the idea is that we shoot this and it lights up. Very uh, good visual feedback. It takes a bit of space, but it's very good for the player. You can see when the pad is active, when it's not, and you can always hook this up to a, I don't know what it's called, R, R and snore the random thing that saves the binary values. I don't care about the terms and whatnot, but the idea is that you can hook this up to a binary saving system and keep it permanent so that as soon as it's activated, it's always active. But if not, you can just always hook that up to that, or if you're using the allocator mod and assuming people are playing single player, you can siphon off that power by just throwing an allocator behind it and leaving it out of that. And then over here we have our hidden fire, and it's the same idea, we just have smoke coming out of the ground. The problem is that we aren't getting as many particles as we would if we had two fire next, next to it. However, we can shoot the pad still, and it activates. And an interesting thing about that as well is we don't actually have to shoot the pad directly. So if you were to put this too high, uh, you can still activate the pad, and the idea is that a lot of times you may want to put the pad in an inaccessible area that maybe it's harder to hit or you know you've blocked off the ability to hit it directly etc because you don't want people using things like I don't know um, items or fishing rods to activate your pad you can actually hide the pad and I found that you can shoot the top half of a block and still activate the pressure pad very useful. It makes it much more forgiving. If you shoot the bottom half, it doesn't do that, but the top half does. So if someone were too low to actually properly see the pressure pad, you could still have a much more forgiving system where you would shoot and still activate a pad. And that's really important because a lot of times you want your pad to be very high, as I said, or you may want to, you know, protected in some way, but also because it's just a lot more forgiving with the way the arrows come down. See, I'm aiming here, it goes slightly to the right and stuff. It's just a very forgiving system. And also, there's one more interesting thing, and this is uh, rather secret, so I would probably make this into a secret in my own adventure maps, and if it's still possible, at least in the you know coming versions, I would definitely want to make a secret with this idea, and the idea is it's raining right now, all super conveniently like, and guess what rain generates? That's right, it generates particles. And so, this pressure pad here will always active, activate while it's raining, and nothing else. We have nothing here to generate particles except punching, so as long as we have rain, this pressure pad will activate. Yes, very, very stealthy, very stealthy. There's no fire, no water around here, but rain always generates particles, and I'll show you how that's done. You can see right now that where I'm standing, we have a plus sign of rain particles that are falling, or not rain particles, but rain, I don't know, textures, whatever it is, that's falling down in a plus sign, as I said, and it's doing that in every block, and that generates a sort of field, a square in each corner here, so you can see that I'm not getting rained on, and if I look up, there's a perfect square above me. And the idea is that each one of these blocks are being hit by rain and they're generating splash particles. So you don't really have to worry about getting it directly under the rain or anything like that. You will always have rain in every block and those will create splash particles and enable you to activate pads. So you can make secrets where you have an island maybe or some hidden place and the only way to access a secret is to shoot an arrow at the pad whenever it's raining. Very interesting. 
so that should be about it for this video, and I hope to have more of these sort of adventure mechanics later, but I haven't really been working on too many recently at all, and I will see you next time.